right in the sight of God and while he was praying I wish I had some Bible students here while he was praying God speaks to Isaiah and tells Isaiah turn around uh huh yeah if I could put it where y'all could catch it Hezekiah was at the altar in the sanctuary and Isaiah got to the edge of the parking lot and God told him turn around now, go back and tell Hezekiah I heard his prayer I saw his tears and I'm adding 15 years to his life here's a quick shouting moment so I can wrap this message up in the next 20 to 25 minutes you don't mess with folk who've been through something and know God brought them out I wish I had some help here. You don't mess with folk who got a prayer life. You don't, you don't mess with folk who may not say much to you, but tell God everything. And do I have 20 folk in here who will holler at me? Who knows that when you start telling God about it and just sit back and just watch it, how it unfolds, won't God work that thing out for you so pretty that when they won't appoint fingers, they can't say a word. Yeah. so glad yeah I learned to trust him precious Jesus he's my savior and my friend and I know Lord have mercy that thou art with me and you will be with me too, to the end. Jesus, Jesus, somebody know what I'm talking about. How I trust him, how I prove him, oh, Jesus, precious Jesus, give me grace <laughs> to trust you. Psalm 46, Psalm 46, Psalm 46. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 46. I want to read today the entire psalm. Ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong. I want to read it today from the English Standard Version of Scripture. Reads a little bit different from King James, but I, you get the message just the same. Psalm 46, beginning in verse 1 from the English Standard Version, these words are recorded. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, Though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Pause. Think about that. That's what Selah means. Verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. 
she shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The heathen, the nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Pause and think about that. Verse 8, come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Pause and think about that. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Think with us and pray with us for a few moments. We'll not be long today. As my daddy would say, you may as well get on the bandwagon with me now. Because at the time you get on, I might be getting off. I want to preach today with your prayers and certainly as the Lord shall lead in the spirit so guide. Let me see if I can talk to us from this subject on the job training. Yeah, on the job training. Pastor Burston, it has been said on more than one occasion that life is a process of good days and bad. Life is a process of ups and downs. It's a process of victories and defeats. No matter what walk of life you may come from or from what road you choose to travel, whether the road is straight, narrow, or crooked and broad, all of us have our share of situations that define who we are as a people. Understanding, beloved, is that we all encounter one thing or another in our lives, Johnson. It's important that we realize that our lives are not defined by what we go through. Our lives are not defined by what we encounter, but rather our lives are defined more by how we react and respond instead of what we go through. You've heard the old phrase, right? Life is 2% of what happens to you and 98% of how you respond to it. The reality for those of us who desire to move forward, those of us who are ready to move to the next place, the next dimension, the next level in God is really found in how we look at where we are right now. Yeah, make it live, Pastor. In other words, we can either see defeat or we can see destiny. We can see our potential or we can see problems. It's all in how you look at it. The reality for those of us who desire to move forward is that we've got to learn how to see hardships, see difficulties, see those rough patches in our lives as moments to grow and develop into what God has designed for us. In other words, I got to take those rough spots in my life and grow from them. I got to take what I'm going through and let it make me better instead of bitter. You remember, it's all in how you see it. And I, and I got to believe, Sean, that this is what the sons of Korah had in mind when Psalm 46 was written. But in order for us to really understand what was taking place in Psalm 46, you're going to have to travel back with me to the book of the prophet Isaiah. Yeah, in order for us to understand this, because when we look at Psalm 46 in its historical context, you go back to the 36th and 37th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah to see that Psalm 46 was actually a song of praise. Psalm 46 was actually a song of celebration, Brother Dickens, because they were celebrating the delivering power of God in their own situation. Yeah, at the time Psalm 46 was written, beloved, Isaiah 36 and 37 tells us that God's chosen people were under attack at the hand of Sennacherib and the Assyrian army. According to that passage in Isaiah 36, the Assyrians were seeking to attack God's chosen people who were under the leadership of King Hezekiah. And may I take a sidebar here and say they should have known better than to attack a group of folks under a leader who had been through something and know that God had brought him out. 
Yeah, y'all do remember this Hezekiah, right? This, this is the fella that the Bible records was sick unto death. You remember? This is the fella that the prophet Isaiah came to him and said, set your house in order because you're going to die. You're not going to live. This is the fella who turned his face to the wall and prayed and asked God to remember how he had served him in truth and had done that which was right in the sight of God. And while he was praying, I wish I had some Bible students here. While he was praying God speaks to Isaiah and tells Isaiah turn around uh huh yeah if I could put it where y'all could catch it Hezekiah was at the altar in the sanctuary and Isaiah got to the edge of the parking lot and God told him turn around now, go back and tell Hezekiah I heard his prayer I saw his tears and I'm adding 15 years to his life here's a quick shouting moment so I can wrap this message up in the next 20 to 25 minutes you don't mess with folk who've been through something and know God brought them out I wish I had some help here. You don't mess with folk who got a prayer life. You don't, you don't mess with folk who may not say much to you, but tell God everything. And do I have 20 folk in here who are holler at me? Who knows that when you start telling God about it and just sit back and just watch it, how it unfolds, won't God work that thing out for you so pretty that when they want to point fingers, they can't say a word? Yeah, 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 yeah. According to Isaiah Johnson, Hezekiah tried to pay him off by hoping that they would leave him alone. He tried to give them a bounty. But when you get there, you see that Senna Sharib wasn't having it. Instead of that, he sends another terror by the name of Rabshakeh. Rabshakeh went to Jerusalem with an army of folk and went to taunt God's chosen people. But it's something here when you get to Isaiah 37 that you see that's worth looking at because while they were taunting him, Isaiah 37 says that we see what God does when his people are under pressure. For the Bible declares that while Rabshakeh was preparing for an attack against God's people Hezekiah was praying for deliverance somebody catch the revelation because isn't it amazing that while your enemies are working to hurt harm and hinder you God will set you up to seek him and he'll send some help Lord have mercy so much so that at the end of chapter 37 here's a shouting moment at the end of chapter 37 while the enemy was approaching and seeking to surround Jerusalem the Bible says as in Isaiah 37 uh, that God sent an angel Lord help me here y'all ain't ready and with one swoop of the angel 185,000 Assyrians were left dead at the gates of Jerusalem somebody missed it somebody missed it let me go back over it one more time because while the enemies were working to hurt harm and protect God's people God's people were covered with help by God himself man I wish I had somebody who understands that you don't have to fight the fight all you got to do is sit back and let God fight the battle for you man I wish I had about 60 people in here who can say I'm a witness that God will fight your battle if you just be still God will take care of the situation if you learn how to let go and let him have his way God will silence your enemy while you're crying out to him come on somebody is there anybody who who knows that God will handle it better than you can when you learn how to step back and let him have his way. Ra, give me some more sound in the monitors if you don't mind. This great feat in the life of God's chosen people leads the sons of Korah. That's good. Thank you. To write the words of the text. Because Psalm 46, beloved, was written while the people were going through. Come on now, Psalm 46, beloveds, was actually written while they were under attack. Psalm 46, y'all, was written while they were going through their situation. Another quick sidebar, because somebody knows that even in your roughest moment, that's a moment for you to find a praise in the midst of your problem. Man, let me get in somebody's Kool-Aid. Y'all about to get upset with me, but I came to help somebody. Have you ever notice uh, that it is so easy to cry and complain about what you're going through 
It's so easy to talk about, I don't know why it's got to be me. I don't know why I'm going through it. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Can I let you in on a little secret? Some folk done seen that trouble, done bypassed it, done moved on from it, and can look back and tell you the Lord was right there with me, keeping me and covering me every step. I still ain't got no help up in here. I wish I had somebody who can look back over your life and say, my God, when I couldn't figure it out, God was working it on my my behalf so now we see here we see here psalm 46 was written while they were under attack while they were going through which brings me to lead this subject with you of on the job training because beloved in this training called life in this thing called life everything is not going to be given to you once you get started some things are going to happen and they're going to come to you while you're going through what you're going through. Can I talk to somebody this morning to just encourage you to stop thinking you're the only one suffering? Stop thinking you're the only one having difficulty. My God, have you ever ran into contact with somebody and every time you ask them how they doing, is something wrong? How you doing? Well, my back hurting. Lord, uh, this hurting. I, I ain't got no money. Lord, this going wrong. Lord, that going wrong. Pastor, my dog bit my ankle. Lord, the cat don't want to get along with the dog. My husband ain't speaking to me. My wife ain't cooking for why y'all looking at me like that. The reality of it is that sometimes you got to look beyond the pressure uh, and see the potential uh, to God working that thing out. Let us not be weary in well-doing because in do seize am I helping somebody this morning yeah 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 so the reality of it is Psalm 46 is actually a reminder to us beloveds that whatever we encounter in life whatever we go through no matter what the circumstance is God's got it and when we do what we are supposed to do God will handle it what you saying, Pastor? Well, I got proof of that in Scripture. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 tells me what I need to do. If my people will call by, would humble themselves, seek, and then. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive sins, and I will heal the land. Somebody needs to know that it's what we go through in life that actually ought to help us prepare to celebrate before, during, and after what we go through. You see, you got to realize that God is there to help you no matter what you're facing. Yeah, he's there to provide refuge. He's there to provide security. And I wish I had somebody who knows that he'll give you peace, that passive all understanding. God is there to give us the training to go through, to go around, to come out, and to come over. In other words, God is there to rescue us. That's why we got to learn how to ask the Savior to help us. Comfort, strengthen, and keep us. He is willing to aid us, and he will carry us through. So now, based on the story that is behind the text, based on what took place in the lives of God's chosen people in the book of Isaiah that leads them to write Psalm 46, I want to quickly show you what happens to us as believers when we go through our on-the-job training. Can I, can I show you what happens when we go through life and encounter all that life gives to us there are a couple of things right in this psalm here that show me that my own the job training is worth something can I show it to you real quick here's the first thing right in the psalm first thing in psalm 46 number one my own the job training has provided me strength in every situation what I go through has actually y'all ready for this strengthened me now watch it now because once again historical context comes into play we go back to Isaiah 36 and 37 because in this moment of Israel's history beloved God steps in and handles the issue for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. y'all see it you see it while the Assyrians were relying and boasting of their military strength while the Assyrians were talking about their high castle on a high mountain surrounded by iron gates with the protection of fierce warriors, God's chosen people had another testimony. 
God's chosen people simply said in the midst of what the Assyrians have, in the midst of what our enemies think they have to destroy us, here is our testimony. God is our refuge and strength. Man, y'all missed a good shouting moment because while other folk are relying on what they got, some of us ought to celebrate the God who got it all. Man, y'all should have said amen right there. While other folk are talking about what they got and what they own, is there anybody who can say my testimony is I don't possess houses or land, fine clothes or jewelry, sorrows and cares of this old world, my lot seems to be, but I have a Christ who paid the price way back on Calvary, and I wish I had somebody that'll holler at me, because you know Christ is all. All in all uh, this world to me. Christ is all. Uh, he's everything to me. Uh, Christ is all. He rules the land and sea. Uh, Christ is all. Without him, uh, nothing would be. Uh, Christ is. Y'all ain't talking to me. Is there anybody who can say when I don't have money, uh, I got God. Uh, when I don't have good sense, I got God. Uh, when hellhounds are on my trail, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. You see their testimony was even while there are earthquakes that have the possibility of destroying man-made kingdoms, I'm not worried about it. I will not fear. Why? God is my refuge. You see the hardships of life ought to teach you how to properly place your priorities, beloved. See, when you discover that everybody you can count, you can't count on. Maybe I said that too fast. Let me say it one more time. When you live through life and you start discovering everybody you can count, you can't count on. Isn't it good to know there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus? Is there anybody, is there anybody who can say that I've discovered that when everybody else walks off, I can still rely on the strength of God. Uh, when you learn how to walk by faith and not by sight and keep your hand in his hand and pray without ceasing and love your enemies, uh, you'll then build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Even when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Why the Lord is my life. Uh, when you think you can't go any further, I wish I had somebody who knows that's when God steps in. And won't he give you power to make it through the rough spots of your life. When, when your back's against the wall and it feels like the roof is caving in, is there anybody who knows that God will provide a way of escape? Y'all y'all ain't saying nothing. Is there anybody who knows in here that even when the enemy think they got your corner and they got ready to take you out and they got the plan to destroy you, won't God reach in and snatch you out of the mess? Y'all ain't talking to me. And bring, come on, come on, come on, come on, Peter to help me out. St. James don't went to sleep and I'm trying to get out of here in the next 15 minutes. Come on, Peter. Come on, help me out. Please help me remind these folk that even in a no-win situation with your feet locked in stocks uh, and guards all around you, God will send an angel in the midnight hour, free you from the prison, put you outside the prison, take you two blocks from the prison, and you'll look back and say, my soul, look back and wonder how, who am I talking to today who needs to know if you hold on for a little while longer he will bring you through but then there's something else I see here y'all I'm moving I'm moving I'm moving I, I gotta get out of here I gotta get out of here but I declare I feel a run and I ain't ready to go there yet secondly y'all my on the job training has not only helped me see that I've got God's strength in every situation. Secondly, according to the text, my on-the-job training, my life experiences, y'all, have taught me how to see God's sustained stability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not enough that he keeps me stable. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that while he's keeping me stable, he sustains. Can I show it to you right here in the text? It's right here in the text. It's right here in the text. And y'all probably missed it. As many times as we have read Psalm 46, you missed something because I've missed it all these years. And it really caught me by surprise when I saw it. It's right there, y'all, in verse number four. In verse number four, there are four words that kick off that verse. Those four words are simply, there is a river. Stick with me, stick with me, stick with me. The streams make glad or make prosperous the city of God. Break it down, y'all, break it down. Because again, I got to go back to the book of Isaiah and show this to you now. Because this situation in the lives of God's chosen people has shown them God's power to cover them even when they couldn't keep themselves. Watch it, y'all. Look at it. Look at it. Well, beloved, what can I say? We have come to the close of yet another Great Awakenings television broadcast. It's been my joy to share the last 30 minutes of word, worship, and witness with you. And I pray that what you have seen today has been a blessing, an uplift, an encouragement, and an empowerment to your life. Listen, let me take this opportunity, as I always do, to extend an invitation to you to join us in worship at the Place of Great Awakenings, the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on all of our social media and streaming sites. Our Sunday morning worship experience begins at 1030 a.m. every Sunday. You have the option to worship your way, whether you join us in person with a maximum attendance of 75 or you join us virtually on our streaming sites. We would be more than happy to have you joining us as we worship and praise our Savior for keeping us and allowing us to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. Don't forget, Bible study is held every Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. It is streamed on all of our streaming sites as well as our conference call line. If today's service has been a blessing to you, I'm happy to let you know that it is available on CD and DVD. All you'll have to do is contact our church offices and request the service using the information that you see listed there on the screen. Someone from our administrative offices will make contact with you and will secure your copy of today's broadcast for your continued listening, inspiration, and uplift through the word of God. As we come to the close of today's broadcast, I pray today that you have been blessed by the word. I want to say a special good morning, as always, to the staff and the residents of the Hunter Hill Nursing and Rehabilitation Center and all of you who are watching Great Awakenings this Saturday morning from perhaps a hospital, nursing home, convalescent home, or a private sick home. Our prayer, as always, is that God will keep you in a perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on him. Until next Saturday morning, when we will return with yet another worship experience from the sanctuary of the St. James Church, I am Pastor J.T. Worthy simply saying, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now and always. Blessings upon you is our prayer.